Since its launch in 1948, Farnborough International Air Show has seen many firsts. The debuts of the Vickers VC-10, Concorde, the Eurofighter and the Airbus A380. But today it saw a new first, its first no-show show. Well, because of COVID-19, the event itself was cancelled. But organisers at Farnborough International stepped up with a virtual event called Farnborough Connect, which is on all week and has been attracting already thousands of aviation, aerospace and defence professionals from around the world. The UK government put weight behind the event, with opening remarks from the Secretaries of State for Trade and Defence, while industry leaders addressed the key issues of the day at a time when they're tackling, to quote Jean Fauri, the CEO of Airbus, the greatest crisis in commercial aviation. It doesn't mean that we will not be there uh, moving out of the crisis, on the contrary, uh, but we need to adapt. And we need to adapt to a crisis, to a situation that was uh, in none of our risk scenarios. Uh, it's uh, really something that uh, was not planned uh, and not to that extent. And uh, we went from a, a very short-term, immediate uh, situation of uh, the aviation of the world being grounded to a situation where the airlines themselves have to adapt to a, a situation which is lasting months and maybe years. The panel showed relative optimism, but a message was clear. The ability to adapt is fundamental to survival. Now is the time to invest, particularly in technology, that will deliver greater sustainability. And sustainability was the running topic through the day, even Trump in COVID, as Tony Douglas, the CEO of the UAE national carrier Etihad Airways, said. Um, obviously, COVID dominates the aviation agenda at the moment, but in no way does it uh, overshadow uh, the work that was going on and the commitments that we'd previously made to sustainability with a capital S. UK Transport Secretary Grant Shapps said the British government's Jet Zero bill as part of a zero carbon by 2050 commitment would see UK aviation industry have the opportunity to innovate. The reason why I think we're in a unique position and even a unique position potentially for leadership through the Jet Zero Council on all of this is we're the only major economy right now who's legislated by law for zero carbon by 2050 and for net zero and we can't get there uh, unless we sort out aviation. Indeed, away from the virtual show, yet very much related, Faraday announced it had the support to move Bihar, the bioelectric hybrid aircraft, a stole aircraft that will offer affordable, quiet and green regional air transport, to Duxford, just outside Cambridge, where the prototype will be built. The flying VTOL minivan will take passengers or freight from regional airports as a greener alternative to expensive and congested land-based alternatives with a range of 1,000 miles and it takes off in less than 300 metres. And on that subject, at a groundbreaking session, Elevated Mobility, getting from demo to do, Dr. Will Roper, the Assistant Secretary of the US Air Force, said governments and the military in particular need to work with innovators. He justified why the US Air Force is accelerating development of the commercial EV toll industry by backing Agility Prime, the kind of flying car program. But when we look at urban air mobility and what a big impact that could be to the economy, not just the US's, but the world's, the Air Force cannot stand by idle and just hope that the market evolves in a way that's beneficial for the country and the military. We want to be actively engaged with it, which is why we've raised our hand on the Agility Prime program and said, we think we can be some of the first adopters of this technology. We can get it over the goal line of our safety and certification process, start purchasing vehicles, start flying them, and build confidence in the technology so it can transition from military use to domestic use. And as eyes are on Japan this week with the UAE's Mars Hope project due to lead the rush to Mars, the attraction of the Red Planet was a key session at today's event. Sustainability is also at the heart of space exploration, as Will Whitehorn explained. You know, it was those human beings on the Apollo who first looked back and saw that blue planet who inspired really the environmental cause of the 19, late 1960s all the way through. You know, environmentalism until then had been a bit about silent spring and the hopelessness. Whereas 
when the, the idea of the planet was seen by human beings and they talked about it, um, I'm thinking of, you know, Armstrong, Walsh and Collins and their predecessors on the earlier Apollo missions, all were, were in wonder at the planet. And if it hadn't been for those human beings here, I am sure the, the movement would have been different. There was absolute belief that there will be some of Mars brought back to Earth, enabling us to learn much more about a planet that we can only jump to during a two-year window when planetary cycles are aligned. So back to Earth now. If you missed any of today's programmes, you know you can register free and catch up on the site. And again, sessions will be available to watch for a week after the show. And tomorrow, there's a clear focus on defence and future combat aircraft. Don't miss it.